Oh, thank you, Justin. Can everybody hear me? Can anyone? Can anyone hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Peace, brother. Oh, peace. Lovely. Thank you. Peace, 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 everyone. Peace. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Sunday study sessions. Let me see who we've got in the place today. Who's in the place to be? Obviously, we've got the the king, A O A. As always, good to see you, brother. Good to see you in the space. Hello, Gladys. Hello, Auntie. Good to see you. We've got Rose Cairo. We've got Asante. Yes, peace, King. Do you know what? I'm going to shout you this week, actually, because um, it's been a minute. And we've got Sister Lyo. I always see your beautiful face, so happy to see you in the space as well. Um, Anna King. Nice. Okay. Anyone want to unmute and just tell me how your week's been? Anyone feeling interactive today? Yeah, it's been a good week. It's been a good week. A couple of L's, yeah. but L's are lessons, so it was needed at that time. Trust. Mm. Yeah, same. I felt that still. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> L's are definitely lessons. To be honest, today, that's actually the theme. Hold on, let me just get my notes. Let me just get my theme. That's actually today's theme is a stop loss. We're talking about L's. We're talking about how to... How to um, minimize what's the phrase minimize losses over maximize profits that's what i'm going to go for today that's, that's what i mean that's the theme that's the theme that's the theme so i'm going to jump in because um i want to respect your time for those of you who are here on time if anyone else comes in later then they're going to have to catch it on the recording um i apologize if i seem a little bit rattled this morning i've had a very 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 um traumatizing morning i can't lie <laughs> I've had a very traumatizing morning this morning. Um, someone, yeah, jumped off a building like right in front of me um, when I was out shopping. So, you know, that kind of rattled me a little bit. I was like, oh my gosh, my hand was shaking. And, yeah, yeah, right, that's a lot. Yeah, mad thing, mad thing. Just behind the Sainsbury's, bro, it's crazy. Literally jumped off the, the 11th floor. Just, he was standing there out his window naked anyway. I just yes. jumped off the window, like, what's going on? But at the same time, it was a reminder for me. When I tell you it was a lesson for me, because yesterday I didn't leave the house at all. I stayed indoors all day, just soaking, wallowing in depression, as you do sometimes. Do you know what I mean? I caught a couple of L's last week as well, you know, in my trades. It was annoying me. And then one thing I learned today is, do you know what? I have another chance. Do you know what I'm saying? I have another chance. As long as I haven't quit, as long as I haven't given up, as long as I'm not dead, do you know what I mean? Then I have another opportunity. Um, I can do it again tomorrow. Day. Brand new day. Tomorrow's a brand new day, guys. So, do you know what I mean? Just remember that. Um, that was the lesson that I got today. So, I'm grateful for that, as, as traumatizing as it was. But, yeah, bear with me if I'm a little bit, you know, because this was like we're talking like an hour ago. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So, I'm still a little bit um, in my head. But at the same time, the show must go on. It doesn't matter what's happening. Do you know what I'm saying? We absolutely must be disciplined with these Sunday study sessions um and we must make the most of them we must learn together we must study together we must develop together um discipline is quite a challenging thing for me i feel like it's not in my nature to be disciplined you know i'm an air sign i'm a gemini so i'm very you know i'm a pisces moon as well for those of you who know what that means so i'm very go with the flow i'm very oh what's over there oh let's try that i like to explore i like to be creative i like to experiment i like to try new things but discipline and, you know, being fixed and sticking at one thing for that's, that's not my natural thing. That's something that I'm having to kind of learn and develop. Um, so thanks guys for helping me with that. I appreciate that. These Sunday study sessions are helping me with my discipline and I hope they're helping you with yours as well. Um, so yes, King, <laughs> it's the same here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Thank you Rose as well. Okay. Yeah. So basically then, what we're going to do um, is we are going to, today, we're going to focus on the stop loss. Before we do that, um, I just want to get a feel for the room, actually. Is there anybody in here who's here for the first time? Is the question that I usually ask. Is there anyone here who's here for the very, very first time? You've never come to a Sunday st uh, study session before. This is your first ever Sunday study session. You're not quite sure what to expect. Have you got any of you guys in the room? Mm, okay, so you're all seasoned veterans, yeah? Good. 
Excellent, because this particular um, session then, I'm really glad about that because this particular session is kind of more for um, people who know a little bit of the fundamentals. You know, We're going to kind of cover what a PIP is and this and that, but really the focus is on the stop loss. So I watch a lot of videos when it comes to trading. Um, definitely watch the wow videos. Um, I, do that, I do that often. Um, but I also try and get knowledge from as many places as I can. Um, I remember I was watching one video and this trader made a really good analogy. He said um, that he's been learning so many different strategies that now he's like a ninja when it comes to taking on the market because he's got all these different tools under his belt. You know, so it's like he's there facing the market and he sees this and he knows, oh, okay, this means da 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 And then he sees that and he's like, oh, okay, that means da 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 And then he sees something else and he's like, okay, maybe if I, apply, if I try this... Um, if I try this indicator, what will happen? Okay, I knew it. Do you know what I mean? You see that, you know, it's important that you understand things like volume. What is volume? Do you know what I mean? These are things that are really handy to know. Um, you know, how do certain indicators work? Of course, what is a candlestick? You know, um, what is a pit? But as many, as many different tools as you can under your belt, they're going to give you the best chance of taking down this market, you know, dominating the market. And that's what we're here to do. We're here to dominate the market, right? So today, I want to focus on the stop loss. Before I dive into the stop loss, I just want to cover one of the fundamentals, uh, one of the fundamental questions that we talk about often on the Sunday study sessions. And that question is, what is a PIP? So maybe to save me a little bit of time then, seeing as you guys are all seasoned veterans, um, does somebody want to unmute and tell me what is a PIP? Okay, Elaine here. A pip is a point in percentage, and it's a measure. Excellent. I mean, that was a, a fantastic. That was the best answer I could have possibly hoped for. This. Thank you so much. Yes, point in percentage is what pip stands for, and a pip is a unit of measurement. So basically, um, I try to drink as Nathan is always getting on to us. I try to drink two liters of water a day. This is one and a half liters. I I aim to drink two liters of water a day. You know, make sure I'm staying on top of my greens. Do you know what I mean? Um, but, you know, when you're drinking water, you can say, how many litres did you drink? I drank two litres of water. That is a unit of measurement. Um, if you go for a run, you can say, oh, I jogged three miles today. Yeah, that is a unit of measurement. When the market moves, the market moves in pips. So the market moves from, uh, say, for example, right now, one pound is worth one dollar and 40 cents, Right. But it's not actually one dollar forty. It's one point four. It's one point four zero one two three or whatever, right? Um, but let's just say one point four zero 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 zero, just to just to make the math easier. Price goes from one point four zero 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 to one point four zero one zero zero. Then the market has moved up ten pips. Yeah, and we can measure that and we can be like, okay, the market's moved 10 pips today, you know, or the market's moved 50 pips today. So a pip is a unit of measurement. That is how we measure how far the market has moved. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. Fantastic, thank you. Brilliant. Okay, so one of the beautiful things about this space is that we earn on a price per pip basis. So what does that mean? Well, it means that if the market moves 10 pips, for example, and I'm just saying 10 for like for ease of math, right? If the market moves 10 pips, um, then we can say enter the market at one pound per pip and we are going to catch 10 pips and each pip is going to be worth one pound because you've entered the market at one pound per pip. Okay, so um, we earn money on a price per pip basis. If you enter the market at 10 pounds per pip, each pip is going to be worth 10 pounds. So if you catch 10 pips at 10 pounds per pip, then you are going to earn 100 pounds. Yeah. If you catch 10 pips at one pound per pip, you're going to earn 10 pounds. If you catch 10 pips at, say, 10 pence per pip, um, then you're going to earn a pound, right? Oh, and also, just to be clear, for those of you who, um, who are interested in this kind of stuff, it's actually dollars per pip. It's not pounds per pip. So I'm saying pounds because obviously I'm here in the UK. 
Um, but obviously, I'm sure some of you guys might not be in the UK. Some of you guys might be in the States. Some of you guys might be in, you know, um, I know we got we have some people here from Ghana and we have some people here from all over the world. So, you know, it's not actually pounds, it's dollars per pip. Um, so I should probably correct my terminology, actually. Instead of making you guys come and, and understand me, let me speak the correct language. So it's dollars per pip. So you're going to earn $10 or $100, right? Um, however, however, the risk that is incurred here is that we also lose money on a price per pip basis. Okay, so if you enter the market and the market um, is going up and it goes up 10 pips, then where you've entered and where you've, where you've set your take profit, you've caught 10 pips at a price per pip basis, whatever, whatever price you put in, you've earned money, right? But if the market goes down, then you will be losing money at the same rate at one pound per pip or 10 pounds per pip or 10 pence per pip, right? So it's really important that you don't invest, <clears throat> they don't risk more than you can afford to lose, okay? Um, consistency. So for example, you don't wanna win, um, you don't wanna catch say 100 pips um, at 10 pence per pip and then lose 50 pips at one pound per pip you know, because then you will be losing more money than you're winning. Even though you've caught 100 pips, yeah, even though you've caught 100 pips at 10 pence per pip, the fact that you've lost 50 pips at one pound per pip means you've lost 50 pounds, yeah? You've won 10 pounds because you've caught 100 pips at 10 pence per pip. So you've won 10 pounds, brilliant. You've lost 50 pips at one pound per pip, you've lost 50 pounds, right? So it's important that you're consistent instead of um, fluctuating how much you're winning and losing. Is that making sense to everyone? Is everyone still following me? Let me know if I'm spacing out. Yeah, yes, we do. Yeah, you guys are still following It makes sense. Fantastic. Okay. Um, so the ideal strategy, the ideal strategy is to, uh, when you're managing your risk, is to have the same amount of loss but a different amount of wins, yeah? So the same amount of loss. So whenever you lose a trade, this is where your stop loss comes in. Let me explain to you what a stop loss is because I often forget these sessions are for people who may not know what a stop loss is, right? So a stop loss is a way to um, stop yourself from losing more than you would like to lose, okay? So let's say, for example, you enter the market. Remember we said that one pound is worth 1.400000, right? So um, if the market goes up to 1.40100, it's gone up 10 pips. Or let's say 1.4100. You've caught 100 pips, right? Um, that's great. But when you enter at 1.4000, you need to put a stop loss beneath that level, almost like a seatbelt, so that if the market does drop, it will hit your stop loss. If, the, if you enter at 1.40 and the market drops, it can carry on going down for months, honestly. It could carry on going down for how long? Who knows, you know? Um, and you'll be waiting for the market to come back up and you're trapped because you've entered the market. The market has dropped and it, it's not a good feeling. I've been there. When I first started, it definitely happened to me. Um, and I didn't know what was going on. And it was because I, hadn't, I didn't understand what I was doing here, right? Um, so you really want to be careful about that. Your, your stop loss is essentially like a seatbelt that will stop the market from dropping any lower or stop you from being in the market when, if and when the market drops lower than you thought it was going to drop. Okay, so if you think the market's going to go from 1.4 to 1.41, yeah, you're going to catch those 100 pips. If you think that's going to happen, then you're going to enter the market at 1.4 great but you need to put your stop loss below 1.4 so maybe 1.3990 you know to give you like a little a little space at the bottom right or maybe 1.3 1.4980 you know to give yourself some space so if your stop loss for example is 10 pips below your entry point okay if your stop loss is 10 pips below your entry point if the market drops and hits that stop loss, then you lose 10 pips, but you're out the trade. So at least you're not gonna lose 50 pips or 100 pips, right? So now that your stop loss has been positioned somewhere that you feel like is a safe place, um, 
now you can kind of um, work out what your lot size is going to be. If it's 10 pips, if you've got a 10 pip stop loss, then you can say, okay, I'm going to enter the market at one pound per pip because if I lose this trade, then the maximum that I will lose is 10 pounds. If your stop loss is 50 pips below your entry point, then like me, you may not want to uh, enter at one pound per pip because I don't want to lose 50 pounds in one trade. So if what I think is going to happen is incorrect and the market does go down and it does hit my stop loss, which happens all too often, by the way, it even happens to traders on shift, you know, so it's nothing to be ashamed of. You know, if the market goes down and hits your stop loss um, and you were wrong, then you live to fight another day, yeah, because you haven't lost 50 pounds in one trade, you know, when you only have like a two, 300 pounds account. Um, you haven't lost like half your account or, you know, like a third of your account in one trade. That is poor risk management, okay? Um, the ideal strategy is to have the same amount of loss per trade, but different wins. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you enter the market and you and you lose, uh, like I like I, I like to risk five pounds per trade, right? I like to risk five pounds per trade. As as nice as that sounds, it's been bugging me. The last couple of weeks have been annoying because it's like I'll lose five pound, five pound, five pound, five pound, five pound, and then before I know, it, I've lost twenty five pounds today, and that's jarring, you know. And I haven't won the trade, and it's so annoying. These are trades that I'm calling myself, by the way. Yeah, that I'm trying to kind of figure out the game. Um, and, you know, I'm losing five pounds. But at the same time, it's okay because I'm losing. I'm only losing five pounds. I'm risking. You will never score if you don't shoot. That's something that Augustine said. You will never score if you don't shoot. Yeah, so it doesn't matter if you're losing trades. Never risk more than you can afford. Fair enough, I lost five pounds. Fair enough, I lost 25 pounds. I'll have to get another 25 pounds and put it back in my account and try again. Because, because if one of those trades hits, then my account will, will grow exponentially. What do I mean by that? Um, well, if you, if you enter at 1.4, maybe I should share my screen for this part, actually. Let me do that. I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to draw a little, I'm going to, I'm going to do a little doodle. because I like my doodles. That makes sense. Uh, there we go. Okay. So if you enter the market here and say, this is 1.4, everyone can see that. Yeah. Yes, please. yes, yes. Yeah, fantastic. Okay, you enter the market here at 1.4 and you are expecting the market to go up to 1.41. Yeah, you're expecting the market to go, that's not a decimal point, so there's a decimal point. You're expecting the market to go up to 1.41. Um, and it goes, and instead, it your stop loss is at one, oh, the stop loss is at 1.39, yeah? So that's your stop loss, that's your entry point, and that is your take profit, okay? So what does that mean? Well, it means that the market starts here, it could go up, it could come down, and then it could go up and hit your take profit, and you've won the trade, and that's fantastic. You were safe, your stop loss was in a safe place, right? However, if the market does go down and hits your stop loss, then you are only going to lose a set amount of pips. Yeah, it's not by force. You can you can say, okay, this is I'm only willing to risk ten pips, or I'm only willing to risk hundred pips, depending on whatever, or I'm only willing to risk fifty pips. Sometimes a trader on shift will call a trade with like a, a 50, 60, 70 pip stop loss. You know, it's perfectly normal. It's good to give the market space to breathe. You know. Um, it's good to, to allow that to happen. That's something that I really need to get into, actually, giving the market a bit more space because I don't do that often enough because um, I'm trying to catch precision trades. And that's not always the best way to go because it's not working out for me right now. You know, so it's good to give the market a bit of space to breathe. That's fine, right? However, the strategy that I want to talk to you guys about today is called a moving, it's called a trailing stop loss. That's what I want to talk to you about. But we're going to get to that in a second. First things first, I want to just make sure does everybody understand what a stop loss is? Or is there anyone who doesn't understand what a stop loss is? Might be a better question. Just unmute, give me a yes or a no. Yes, I understand. No, I'm not sure. Yes, I understand. Thank you. Understand. Yes. Yes, it's excellent. 
Okay, brilliant, 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 brilliant. Okay, cool. Um, so when I say it's good to have the same amount of loss, but a different amount of wins, what do I mean by that? Because it's impossible to know how many pips your stop loss should be, right? It's, it's, it's kind of difficult to know um, in advance before you actually analyze and, and, and check the chart and analyze the chart and be like, okay, this is where my stop loss should be. Sometimes, as I said, your stop loss is going to be 10 pips, sometimes 50 pips, sometimes 70 pips. You don't know where it's going to be. However, if you get your lot size correct, then you can, oh, then you can have the same amount of loss regardless of your, um, of your stop loss size, of your stop loss space. So if you have a 10 pip stop loss and you enter the market at one pound per pip and the market comes down and hits your stop loss, then you are going to lose 10 pounds, right? But check this out. I'm gonna move your ears, all right, cool. If you have a 20 pip stop loss and you enter the market at 50 pence per pip and the market comes down and hits, then how much are you gonna lose, somebody? Anyone? Please say that again. Mm -hmm. If you have a 20 pip stop loss, and you enter the market at 50 pence per pip, and you lose 20 pips. 10 pounds. 10 pounds. 10 pounds. The, 10 pounds. The same 10 pounds. Excellent. The same 10 pounds that you would have lost, or $10, sorry, um, that you would have lost. If it, was, if it was 10 pips, and you entered at one pound per pip, you're going to lose the same amount. If it's 20 pips, and you enter at 50p, per pip, yeah? You're gonna lose the same 10 pounds, the same 10 pounds if the market goes the wrong way. So what you can use that to do is to manage your risk. You can say, okay, do you know what? I am only willing to lose 10 pounds per trade. Like in my case, for example, I am only willing to lose five pounds per trade, five pounds per trade. So if shift gives me a stop loss of 50 pips, yeah, if shift gives me a stop loss of 50 pips, then I need to think, okay, what should my lot size be? If shift gives me a stop loss of 30 pips, what should my stop my, my lot size be? If shift gives me a, a lot size, a stop loss of 70 pips, what should my lot size be? Should I even enter the trade? Do you know what I mean? I have to think about it, I have to weigh it up because me, I am only willing to lose five pounds per trade. That is the rule that I have set for myself for the time being. That's the rule I set for myself, right? So because I've set that rule for myself, whatever the, the, the stop loss is, whatever the stop loss is, that shift is um, recommending, I now have to weigh up, okay, you know, what should my lot size be? Yeah, my lot size is, um, is a servant to the stop loss. If the stop loss is this, then my lot size is that. If the stop loss is that, then my lot size is this. Yeah, does that make sense to everybody? Does everybody understand that? Do you have any questions? Um, sorry, um, good afternoon. I have a question. Mm -hmm. can, you, can you hear me very well, please? I can hear you clearly. Thank you. Um, with the stop loss and the tick um, and the um, lot size, are you saying that we should set the same rates? Um, what do you mean the same rate? Sorry. As in, if we, if I'm, I'm, I'm willing to lose um, 50p, for, um, in a trade. As in, if I set my, uh, my profit, sorry, my, um, my lot size at 0 0.50, uh, sorry, 0 mm -hmm. 0.05, 50p. Mm -hmm. 50p, yeah. Amounts that I'm willing to lose when if the, um, the market reverses, uh, the trade reverses. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing is, if you set your lot size at 50p, then when the market reverses, you will lose more than 50p. You have entered the trade at 50 pence per pip. So mm -hmm. if you have, um, if you lose um, 10 pips and you have entered at 50p per pip, then how much money will you lose? Do you know, um, can you do the math? That's five pounds. Five pounds, excellent. If you lose 20 pips, 
and you've entered at 50p per pip, then how much will you lose? 10 pounds. Exactly. But you've entered at 50p both times, right? Yes. So what I'm saying to you is that what you want to do is you want to calculate how much am I willing to lose and then choose your lot size afterwards. Oh, wow. So, so you don't always enter at 50p. You don't always enter at 50p because sometimes you enter at 50p and lose five pounds. Sometimes you enter at 50p and lose 10 pounds. Sometimes you enter at 50p and lose 30 pounds, you know, and you, and you, and you don't want to do that because 50p, is your, your lot size should react to where your stop loss is. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Excellent. I'm glad. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. That's what this is for. Okay. Um, so let's say, for example, you place 100 trades. Yeah. You place 100 trades and you lose 90 trades and you win 10 of those trades. I mean, that, that would be horrible. That would be terrible. But at the same time, let's just say it happens. You place 100 trades and you lose 90 of those trades and you win 10 of those trades. Now, if your risk management, like mine, is five pounds or five dollars, right? And you lose 90 trades, well, five times 90 is $180, I believe. If I got that right. Yeah, $180 that you're gonna lose. Now, that is that's slow torture. So please, you know, God willing, that'll never happen to you, right? But that's what will happen. However, if you win those 10 trades. Will you earn more than $180? Will you earn more than $180? Well, guess what? There's no way to tell. I can't say that for sure, right? So first things first, don't lose, don't lose 90 trades. <laughs> don't lose 90 trades because that's not, that's not the way forward. Um, but, you know, if you were to, as I say, for example, if you were to enter this trade that's on the screen right now, right? If you were to enter this trade at... Um, this was one of the 90 trades that you lost, yeah? And every single one of these trades, you lose five pounds, you lose five pounds, you lose five pounds, you lose five pounds, till eventually you lose 180 pounds, right? Um, well, what if you were to win the 10 trades? Um, let's say the one trade that you win is at 10 pence per pip. You know, sometimes you could lose five pounds, lose five pounds, and then you win three pounds 69. Do you know what I'm saying? And you win three pounds 69, you win four pounds 70, you win two pounds 83. Do you know what I mean? The market can, you know, can do that. Okay, so here's a strategy. This is, this is the main thing that I want you guys to take from here. It's great to maximize your profits, okay? What does maximizing profits look like? Hold on, first things first. Let's say we're riding a trend. Okay, maximizing your profits, maximizing your profits would look something like entering right here at the bottom, right? And obviously taking profit at the top, entering a second time here, and again, taking profit at the top, entering a third time at the best entry point available, yeah? You've now entered this same trade four times. And every single time you've entered it, you put your stop loss there, you put your stop loss there, you put your stop loss there, you put your stop loss there. So you've maximized your profit and you know, you've know you earned all of that money, right? Times four, right? Which is fantastic. That's great. That's great. But if like me, you are not skillful enough to do that just yet, yeah? If like me, you are not skillful enough to do that yet, then what I want you guys to focus on is minimizing losses, okay? Minimize losses. Hold on. Let me write this down because I really want to make sure this one. So. Oh. Minimize losses over. <laughs> this <seems> so annoying. <laughs> Minimize losses over. Maximizing profits. Now that's my advice. I my advice is that you focus on minimizing losses over maximizing profits. Now, how can you avoid um, how can you avoid losing 90 trades first and foremost? Use shift. Yeah. If you're using shift, then there's no reason that you should be losing 90 trades. 
Well, is that true, actually? Is that true? Because last week, I want to show you guys something, actually, about Shift. Where are we? Hopefully, I'm already logged in. Yeah, fantastic. Okay, this is a good-looking trade, by the way, guys. Look, this trade that's on Shift, you know, look at that. Brand new, ready and waiting for us, first thing on Monday morning, FYI. You know, and this one looks good to me as well. I'm definitely going to be jumping on this one yeah, as soon as the market opens. Good. Yeah, I have noticed that. You see Shifty, you're in the bottom too, right. Yeah. Uh, I like the leak that. Is, is the one I've, I've already set mm. up. The certain mm. specific trades I want to come through, and that is it. Mm. Those, those the what thing? The what thing? Oh, the leeches. Yeah, 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 yeah. Click on yeah, that. Yeah. This trade has right, been on night. And then click add. Add leech. And then you can pick what style of trade you want coming through, all sorts. Look at that. See that, guys? Definitely something worth worth looking into. What did you say there, sister, as well? You said this something about this trade? It's been on since Thursday night. I think it was called on Thursday. And throughout mm. time, it was fluctuating as in the peak. It was going up and down, up and down. Yeah, yeah. The, I think a part of the reason for that is because it's Friday. So um, Friday and Monday the market is, can tend to be a little bit indecisive. During the middle of the week is when I, in my, in my limited experience, that's when the market makes its move. If you look at a candlestick that's being formed, um, when the candlestick is first starting, it's kind of bouncing around, doesn't know what it's doing. And then it makes a decision, boom. And then at the end of it, you know, it might have a pullback or it might do whatever, but you know, really at the, at, at the beginning and at the end of that candlestick, so let's say, for example, a weekly candlestick. Yeah, so on Monday and on Friday, that weekly candlestick, you know, the market might be a little bit less decisive. But during the middle of the week, that's that may be when the market might make a, 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 a decisive move. Um, Euro USD is one of the two currency pairs that I've been studying. Um, I'm surprised because I didn't think that Euro USD was going to go down for 800 pips, if I'm honest. But, you know, I'm going to jump in the trade regardless. I'm just not going to over leverage. And I'm going to do this new strategy that I'm going to show you guys today as well. Um, I'm definitely going to do that 100%. Because what this will do is this will stop you from losing trades. This will, this will minimize your losses. Sorry, because you're definitely going to lose trades regardless. Everybody loses trades. But this will minimize your losses, okay? Um, so what did I want to show you on shift? That's what I want to show you. Let's look at top pip stars. Uh, have a look at last week. Nobody lost a single pip last week, guys, on shift. Nobody lost a single pip last week on shift. This is real time. I have not made this up. I haven't invented this. Me, I don't work for PNT. I don't work for B. I don't, you know, work for shift. Yeah. This is me looking at these results, the same as you. We can see that last week. Nobody lost a single pip. That is impressive. That's, that is absolutely fantastic. However, me personally, me alone, I lost trades last week. How is that the case? When I'm taking shift trades and shift is winning trades and I'm losing trades, how has that happened, right? Well, it's really important that you guys understand that shift, if, if a person, uh, like for example, Gus, if Gus's trade hits take profit one, then the trade is marked as one. That's it. The trade is marked as one. So if it hits take profit one, and then, hold on. If it hits take profit one, it hits take profit two, and then it reverses and hits the stop loss, yeah, then this trade will be marked as one. We won 50 pips. That was it. That was you. You had the opportunity to catch those 50 pips. Well, what if, like me, you were waiting for the market to get all the way to 800 pips. You entered here, right? Right now, you're 20 pips in the, in the green. Fantastic. Right now, you're 50 pips in the green. Fantastic. But you are waiting for the market to hit 800 pips. You've got your stop loss at 50 pips. You're waiting for the market to hit 800 pips, right? Well, that is a risk because shifts excellent success rate, as fantastic as it is, that success rate is definitely going to be limited to take profit one. Whatever take profit one is. Uh, the further down the chart you get, the lower the success rate. Okay, so there's no, there's no guarantee that the mark, that, you know, shift is going to be 800 pips is going to be correct. 
70, 80, 90% of the time. There's no guarantee of that, right? Which is fine, which is fine, because that's the nature of the tool that we have at our disposal. You know, we just need to understand that and learn how to leverage the tool that we have in our hands. Okay, we can leverage this. We can leverage this. Shift has a very, very good success rate, an amazing success rate, up to 20 pips. Sometimes even up to, most of the time, up to 50 pips, yeah? Shift has an amazing success rate, up to TP1, TP2, TP3, right? When you're looking at TP4, 5, 6, 7, 8, you know, it, like I say, it's a little bit, you want to be careful. You maybe want to be a bit more experienced. Um, I'm going to show you guys how you can enter these trades, but minimize your losses. Minimize losses over maximizing profits. It's one thing to enter here, enter here, enter here again, and then watch the market pull back and hit stop loss. And then that's it. You've lost all of your trades now. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, so what do you do to minimize losses? Well, it's a simple trick, actually. Let's go back to here. Hold, hold on, stop animation. Thanks. Let's go back to here. What you do is you move your stop loss into profit. Okay, so if you... Let's go for black, please. Thank you. So if you enter the market here and it goes... If you enter the market here and it goes down, then it goes up, then it starts to come down again. Yeah, what I would suggest that you do is you remove your stop loss from where it was and you place your stop loss here. Now what happens? Now what happens? Well, if the market continues down and hits your stop loss, what will happen? Well, you will win money. How much money will you win? Anything between your entry point and your stop loss. Anything in between your entry point and your stop loss, you have now won that money. You have not lost this trade. Fair enough, you haven't caught it all the way to the top. It will exit you from the trade. Make no mistake about it, it will exit you from the trade. However, you could go the whole week next week without losing a single trade, without losing a single trade. If only you move your stop loss into profit. Now, I wouldn't recommend doing it immediately. You know, you do want to give your um, you do want to give your trade some room to breathe. Hold on, let me just get all of this back. Uh, you do want to give your trade some room to breathe. So, for example, market might go down, up, down, up, and then hit take profit one, and then. Oh, can I go any higher than this? Oh, I can't. Look at that. I've, I've messed up. Okay, hold on. Let me, um, let's do it down here. Let's say, I'm going to do the same thing again. This is your entry point. This is your stop loss. This is your take profit one. This is TP1. Okay. So let's say, for example, now you enter here, market goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down. It goes up, now it's above TP1. It comes down and it finds support and it's going to continue upwards, yeah? What can you do in the meantime? You can now take your stop loss. You can now take your stop loss and you can either move it, oh, wrong one. And you can either move it just here or you can move it all the way up here if you want to. If you want to, do you know what I mean? Now, no matter what happens, you've won your 20 pips. No matter what happens, you have won your 20 pips. Does that make sense to everybody? It feels much better when you put your yeah. stop loss in profit when you're trading, I'm telling you. Yes. Yeah. Less, less anxiety on the heart. Less anxiety yeah, on the sense. heart, trust me. Let's say, for example, um, this is TP2. Okay. And the market goes up comes down, bounces, and starts heading there. Well, guess what I'm going to say? You take your stop loss, take your stop loss, guys, and put it here again. That's it. Now, this is your entry point. This is your entry point. This is your stop loss. Your stop loss is no longer all the way down there. Your stop loss is now way in profit. So no matter what happens, all of this money is yours. No matter what happens, this is all you. Yeah. If the market comes down 
and hits your stop loss, you will earn that money. That's it. That's it. Do you know what I'm saying? You're going to earn that money. You are minimizing your losses over maximizing your profits. It's great if you can, if you can um, enter the market a second time here, enter the market a third time here. If you are skillful enough to do that, then do it. Do it. Do you know what I'm saying? However, what might happen, what may happen, okay, is um, you might enter the market here, for example, and the market might come up and then drop down, and it will hit your second stop loss. You see, it will hit your stop loss because it's come down, which is great. But if you've entered here, then you will lose money. Look at this double top. This is what is called a double top, yeah, where it bounces off the top, bounces off the top again, and then it starts to go down. It's a reversal pattern. You know, so obviously, unless you can predict the future and you know that's going to happen, or unless you are skillful enough to really, um, you know, measure where the trade is going to go, um, then your best bet is to move your stop loss into profit and to protect protect your profits. Is that making sense to everybody? Yes, yes. Yes, it is. Yes, yes, yes bro. Yeah, fantastic. Plus, be yeah. grateful okay. when you get pulled out because a lot of the times be, I know be people, maybe yeah. end, you didn't get all the pips you want, but just trade another day. You got your profit. Profit is better than wages, so we already know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look at this one here. Prime example. Look at this one earlier, right? So we've got a trade here, GDP USD, <clears throat> um, and it's a sell. And um, who's this from? Brian. Brian is saying GBP USD is going to go down 120 pips. He might be right. He might be wrong. Okay. But as soon as, as soon as it's hit 15 pips, he has won the trade. Do you know what I'm saying? That's it. Now this trade, in fact, let me see if it's there already. Yeah, there you go. Trades marked as one. That's it. He's won the trade. It's finished. Yeah. The rest of it is a bonus. Okay, so just bear that in mind. This trade hasn't been won yet. It's still active. See it? This one, this trade has been won. This trade is, is, is won, yeah? Even though it's not hit 120 pips. Okay? So let's do some quick math. Let's do some quick math, okay? Um, you've got a 35 pip stop loss. You've got a 35 pip stop loss, okay? So if you enter at one pound per pip, or one dollar per pip, and this trade goes wrong, you are losing $35. If you enter at 10 cents per pip and this trade goes wrong, you are losing $3.50. If you enter at 10 pounds per pip or $10 per pip and this trade goes wrong, you are losing $350. Now, what you need to do is depending on how much money you have in your account, depending on you, you individually, nobody else can tell you what your risk management strategy should be. Nobody yeah, can tell you, oh, I would suggest that you trade 50p a pip. How can anyone tell you that? How can anyone tell you that? Yeah, No one can tell you, oh, I think you should trade at one pound per pip. Oh, I think you should trade at 10 p per pip. No one knows. I don't know how much money you've got in your account and you don't know how much money I've got in mine. Yeah. Um, so, you know, really, I can't tell you that. All I can say is that only trade what you're willing to risk. The advice, um, I think, is that one percent of your account is the is the advice that I've I've heard the most. One to two percent of your account. So what that means is, if you've got a hundred pounds in your account, then you only really want to risk one pound. Now that might not be realistic for some of you, and that's understandable, yeah. Because obviously, if you enter this trade at ten pence per pip, you're going to lose three pound fifty if it goes wrong. Do you know what I'm saying? So you might not always be able to only risk one percent of your account. However, just bear in mind that the more you risk, the, the more chance you have of blowing that account. Yeah, if you have 100 pounds in your account and you enter at one pound and you lose 35 pounds, you've lost a third of your account. You've lost a third of your account, three, six, nine, 90 pounds, gone. You lose, if you lose this trade three times, you are out the game. You're starting from the very beginning, yeah, which you don't want to do if you can avoid it, which you can, you can avoid it, by managing your risk. Okay, so if you enter with um, one pound per pip and you've got a hundred pounds in your account, this trade, I, I would suggest that you don't do that. It's up to you, do what you want. I mean, look, if you had entered, you'd be 90 pounds up by now. So you've almost doubled your account balance, which is great. Yeah, the risk, 
was risky, but look, it worked out in this particular instance. It's not always going to work out, guys. I'm going to say that now, isn't it? But, you know, what, whether you decide to go for it or not, that's your business. Try trial and error. If you're willing to lose the whole £100, then go for it. Shoot your shot. Jump in at £2 a pip. You know what I mean? Who cares except you, right? So, you know, just be careful, be aware, and only risk what you're willing to lose, what you are willing to lose on the trade. Now, if you did enter this trade at one pound per pip, um, let's say you've got, I don't know, 500 pounds in your account, yeah? Let's say you've got 500 pounds in your account and you're willing to lose 35 pounds for the sake of this trade, for the, for the sake of hopefully earning 120 pounds, right? So you've entered and currently we're at 15 pips. Boom, okay? So your stop loss is still here. Now we're at 30 pips, boom. Your stop loss is still here. Well, at this point, me, I would move my stop loss maybe here or, or I would move at the very least, I would move my stop loss to the entry point. At the very least, I would move my stop loss to the entry point. What that means is if we've entered here and price has gone up 15 pips, it's gone up 30 pips. Now my stop loss is at the entry point. So no matter what happens, it's not 35 pips below anymore. If it comes down and hits the entry point, then fair enough, I haven't lost anything. I haven't won anything, but I haven't lost anything. Fine, I live to trade another day. It is what it is. Do you know what I mean? I live to trade another day, right? That's how I go about it. I'm not saying you have to go about it like that. What I'm doing is showing you another tool so that you can be that ninja, yeah? So you can decide, okay, let me try this. Let me try that. You've got another tool under your belt, right? This is called a trailing stop loss. You move your stop loss into profit. So let's say now we hit, um take profit free right hold on let me undo there you go uh yeah undo that as well so let's say you know we hit take profit free uh we hit take profit four i mean by this point now my stop loss is probably here we've hit take profit four so now my stop loss is probably here then we're on the way up my, now my stop loss is probably here you know because why would my stop loss be here hold on let me do that a little bit cleaner well no that's fine actually why would my stop loss be uh, can I change color? Doesn't, oh yeah, fine. Let's go for yellow. Why would my stop loss be here? Well, if you look at this top bit here, this little bit that's this little bit that's poking out above, and this little bit here, we're seeing support and resistance levels. So I'm thinking, okay, worst case, if price comes down, it will bounce off of this resistance or this support level or this resistance level. Yeah, and if it breaks through this resistance level and that support level, then for all I know, the trade is just going to continue down with now. Do you know what I mean? So now my stop loss is there, safe. I've secured all of this money. I've secured this many pips, or actually in, in real life, look, I've now secured maybe not all 90 pips, actually, because my stop loss is not here. My stop loss is here. Yeah, so I've secured 65 pips, even though the trade is currently... 90 pips in profit. In fact, currently 99 pips in profit. Yeah. Even though the trade is currently 99 pips in profit, I have secured 65 pips. Secured. No matter what happens, no matter what happens, I have secured those 65 pips. Yeah. If, if the trade goes, once the trade goes up to 110, I'm going to secure 90 pips. I'm going to move my stop loss again. And now those 90 pips are safe. So if the market does turn around and come back, it will hit my 90 pip stop loss and I will earn 90 pips. I have not lost this trade. I have won the trade. No matter what happens, I've won the trade. Can you open this up? Yeah, you can. Look at that. Here we go. Beautiful, right? Are you seeing this? So um, he's called a sell, remember? This trade that we're looking at as a sell. So this picture is obviously slightly out of date because he says now is a sell and obviously the market has... Oh, let's go back to red. He says sell, and obviously the market has gone down, right? To currently, we're like 99 pips, okay? So my stop loss, which was up here, my stop loss is now here. You see it? Because obviously, look at all of this um, resistance. So if, if the trade goes from 99 pips, it comes back up, it's going to hit this resistance level and then drop back down. That's what I think will happen. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. It could go down. It could come up, hit this resistance level, and then go down again. Yeah, I could be wrong about that. 
Or I could be right. Who knows? It doesn't matter because my stop loss is not in deficit anymore. My stop loss is now in profit. So no matter what happens, I'm going to win this money. So it looks like a whole mess. No matter what happens, I'm going to win this money. Yeah, even if it does come back and hit my stop loss, I will not lose this trade. Okay, so my challenge to you guys this week, my challenge to you guys this week, for those of you who want to take it up, um, is to minimize your losses and maximize your profits. I don't know how many of you, let me um, get that eye contact thing going because we're, we're wrapping up. Uh, stop share, please. Thank you. There you go. Um, yeah, so my challenge to you guys this week, basically, is to minimize, minimize your losses. Focus on minimizing your losses so that no matter what happens, you do not lose the trade. That is this week's mission. That is for you, Ninja. Yeah, that is this week's mission is to minimize your losses. Okay, no matter what happens, don't lose the trade. The only time you are going to lose a trade, okay, is if... Shift calls a trade or you call a trade yourself, whatever. And as soon as you call the trade, it goes into deficit. Fair enough. It happens. Do you know what I'm saying? It happens. Set yourself a limit. Maybe say, do you know what? I'm only going to lose five trades this week. Depends how many trades you place. I don't know how many trades on average you personally place each week. Um, but let's say you're willing to lose 10% of those trades. Yeah. So if you place 100 trades, you're only willing to lose 10. If you place 10 trades, you're only willing to lose one. Yeah. When I say lose, you know, like I said, sometimes it happens. It gets like that. If it's out of your control, it's out of your control. But if the trade hits TP1, then I want you to move your stop loss to the entry point at the, at the very minimum. Yeah. And that way, what you have to think of um, is protecting your investment. Yeah. Something Prima said once, actually, which I thought was really, really like profound. Protect your investment. You know, like you invest in something. That's what we're here doing. We're here investing in something, yeah? I believe. I believe in the strength of the US dollar. I believe in the strength of the economy for whatever reason. Yeah, I believe that the value of the dollar is going to go up. So I'm going to invest in it because I believe it's going to, the value is going to go up and then it's going to give me a return on my investment, right? So while you're there investing in that thing, Protect your investment because if it does, the, the dollar doesn't owe you anything, yeah? So if it doesn't go up, if it turns around and drops down, that's fine. You were wrong. It happens to actually it happens to everybody. It happens to every. It happens to Warren Buffett, right? It happens to Nathan. It happens to Augustine. It happens to Dr. Brian Stevens. Everyone places trades that are not entirely correct from time to time. It's fine. It's one of those things, right? Um, if that happens, then either it's going to hit your stop loss and you're going to lose your trade, or what I would prefer is, you know, once the trade has gone up a tiny little bit, if you're correct, yeah, if you're correct, up to say your 20 pips, 20 pips is a good um, measure because once the market's gone up 20 pips, the chances are it's going to carry in that direction. It might not, but the chances are it's going to carry in that direction. If it goes down 20 pips, the chances are it will carry in that direction. Okay, so just bear that in mind. 20 pips is like a good indication. That's what one of the reasons why, um, according to, wow, anyway, that's one of the reasons why most of the trades um, take profit one is 20 pips. And then after that, you know, we're going to kind of see what happens. But 20 pips is a pretty good measure. Um, I know it's going to hit these 20 pips. After that, I'm not sure. The 100% the, the, the success rate goes down after those first 20 pips. Okay, no one's guaranteeing you. Gus is not guaranteeing you that the trade is going to hit 800 pips. Gus is confident it's going in that direction. He's confident it's going in that direction. He's confident it's going to at least hit 20 pips. It should, it should at least hit 50 pips. You know, I think it will hit 800 pips. But, you know, the, the, the level of confidence is different, right? Is that making sense to everybody? Do we have any questions? Anyone got any questions about the, um, the moving stop loss, about moving your stop loss into profit? Yes, please, please. I have a question. You've just please, told yeah. me. Um, please, could you just um, go over it again? You said if the stop loss, we should after the, taking the profit one, we should move our stop loss, mm. the position of the stop loss. Please, could you uh, maybe mm. kindly go over it again, please? Um, which part of that do you want me to go over again? Because you just said it. Yeah, the the stop loss, because you said if mm -hmm. the if the 
profit, if you hit the take profit one, and mm -hmm. then the um, maybe the, the the trade reverses. He said you should move the stop loss from from where it is to another position. That's mm -hmm. what I would not In, too into easy. profit. Yeah. Okay. So what what I'm saying then is that if you if you enter the market at um, one point four, and yes. the market goes up to one point four one, yeah, yes. and then the market goes up to one point four two, and yeah. the market goes up to one point four three. Yeah. Instead of you leaving your stop loss at 1.35, yeah, which is below 1.4, mm -hmm. instead of leaving your stop loss there, you should yeah. remove it from there and put your stop loss at 1.41. Yeah. So while the market is now at 1.43, you yeah. entered at 1.4. Yes. The market is at 1.43 and your yeah. stop loss is at 1.41. Mm -hmm. So your stop loss is in profit. In profit. Okay. I get it now. So your Thank stop you. loss is now in profit. You're welcome. You're welcome. I don't have any trades that are open right now. Otherwise, I will show you. But I don't have any trades that are open, unfortunately. I'm sorry about that, guys. Um, I was I was hoping to, but um, I closed I closed out on Friday. Um, I actually hit my stop loss, which was in profit, but still, I hit my stop loss um, on on Friday. So I couldn't show you the trade that I wanted to show you. So but, um, by adopting this um, strategy, one will be able to minimize the losses. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Absolutely. Um, yes. Can you can you see how? Can, does that make sense? Yes, it does make sense. Thank you very much. You can see how, yeah, you will minimize your losses. No one's saying you're never going to lose a trade again. But all I'm saying is that by moving your stop loss into profit, you will minimize your losses. Remember what I said, if you if you place um, 100 trades and you lose 90 trades, you know, you don't want to lose 90 trades, ideally. You know, if you place 100 trades, um, let's say... You win 10 trades, and those 10 trades that you win, you earn um, 50 pounds each from those 10 trades, right? But the 90 trades that you lose, you lose, um, I don't know, 50 pounds each on those trades. Yeah, you've lost, you've lost. But if you can say for 50 of those trades, you don't lose anything, you just break even, break even, break even, break even, then you win a trade. Excellent. Break even, break even, break even. Then you win another trade. Excellent. Break even, break even. Then you lose a trade. Ah, oh, it happens. But at least now you're not losing, 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 losing. Do you know what I mean? Because sometimes you can enter it at the right time. You can enter at the right time. Then the trade will go to take profit one. And then it will come back down and hit stop loss. And now you've lost the trade. That everyone else has won the trade, but you and me. Do you know what I mean? Now I've hit my, my stop loss, whereas I should never have lost the trade. If you enter the trade at the right time and it hits take profit one and you don't take profit, you don't close the trade, you want to leave that trade open, then it comes back down and hits your stop loss. You're going to lose the trade, even though Jeff or Gus has won the trade. You will have lost the trade. Yeah. So the way to stop that from happening is to take your stop loss and to raise it up so that it's now in a safe position. Yeah. So that it's, if it does come down and hits the stop loss, then you're going to lose nothing. You're protecting your money. You're protecting your investment. The money that you have worked hard for, the money that you have sacrificed to invest, you're not going to lose that money. You know, it's just going to be, it's just going to be um, a broke even. Fair enough. Oh, I only won 10 pence. You know, oh, I only won 30 pence. That's fine. I didn't lose anything. I didn't lose anything. Yeah, that is really important because if you're constantly losing trades, then before you know it, your 200 pounds is going to turn into 50 pounds in your account. And you're like, what happened? <laughs> you know, it's happened to me so many times. And I'm like, what happened? How is my 200 pounds now 50 pounds? You know, I'm not, I don't have money like that where I can just keep on refilling up my account, you know? So the strategy is to minimize your losses by moving your stop loss into profit every opportunity that you get. Does that make sense, sister? Yes. Yes, thank yeah, you. Excellent. So much. Yeah. Oh, you're so welcome. Do you have any other questions? No? Oh, I'm hearing someone. I'm hearing someone. Is that you, King? I can see your picture pop up on my screen. Uh, no, no questions. Oh, no questions, no questions, okay. Sandy, Sandy Lamont, and that's that's in Russian over there. 
Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, I see it in Russian, yeah. I, I was like, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. <laughs> yeah, I see you, King. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, well, thank you guys for coming through. Thanks for coming through, you know, to the Sunday study sessions. Like I said, it's helping me to stay disciplined. It's helping me to um, stay focused. It's helping me to keep my study on point, you know, and hopefully you guys are getting value. I know you guys are getting value because every week I'm getting messages. I'm getting people calling me. I'm doing one-to-one sessions. You know what I mean? So I'm grateful, man. I'm grateful that you guys are appreciating it. I'm grateful that you guys are communicating with me. Um, Feel free. Feel, Feel no way whatsoever about contacting me. After the session, if you have any questions that you were too shy to ask in front of everyone or whatever, or you couldn't, or you couldn't think of it, and now, oh, I've just thought of a question, ping it over. We're a team, yeah? Um, I want to help you. Every question you ask me is going to make me think, you know? Um, but it's really important that I stress. It's really important that I stress. And I do this every week, and I must do this every week, okay? That I am not an educator. I am one of your peers, yeah? I am someone who is paying my $150 a month to be in this company, and I am studying, right? So you're asking me, I'm not going to have all the answers to all the questions. And also, sometimes what I say is not going to be correct. In fact, in this video, there are some things that I have said that maybe um, if Carl or, or, or Asante was, was hosting the training, you might say something slightly different. That's fine, yeah? All I'm doing is sharing my perspective, all I'm doing is helping you guys, giving you guys some advice. I'm giving you some insight. If you want education, education is what you are paying for. You are paying for education. You're not paying me for education. None of the money that has left your bank has come into my bank. None of it. Not a single penny. Yeah. So um, none of the money that's left your bank has come into my bank. You know, so all of that money you are paying for, you know, use it. Study well. Check out well. Um, check out MindHub, check out Oracle, check out all of the resources that are available. Look at the Shift PDR that's there, it's new. That's what you're paying for, yeah? That's what you're paying for. You're not just paying for Shift. You're paying for education. How do I invest? That's what you want to be asking yourself. And the more you educate yourself, the more you study... So I just had a question come through. The more you educate yourself, the more you study... Um, oh, hold on. I don't get into the chat. Oh. oh, here we go. Wrong button. Uh, could you please talk about how to calculate stop loss and take profit? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Okay, so I had a question come through. Could you please talk about come through to me in a direct message? Could you please talk about how to calculate um, stop loss and take profit? Um, that might be one for another day, sister. Um, it is something we've spoken about before here. Um, I would suggest that if you can, Justin, my brother Justin, the king, the god, yeah, has posted a, um, he set up a YouTube channel with all of the previous Sunday study sessions. I would suggest that you look at the one on the subject of candlesticks, because that one there, um, we are talking about stop loss a little bit, but it's more like how to calculate your stop loss, you know. Normally, if you've got like a, for example, an engulfing candlestick, then my suggestion is that you put your stop loss just beneath the engulfing candlestick. That's my suggestion. But obviously you need to know what candlesticks you're looking for. You need to understand how candlesticks work. Um, You know, you want to put your stop loss basically below a level of support or above a level of resistance. That's where you want to put your stop loss. And your take profit Um, that's going to come down to market structure and how well you understand market structure. So because those are quite expansive subjects, it's not really something I'm going to cover today. Today's focus was on moving your stop loss into profit, Um, understanding how a stop loss works and how to move it into profit. But it's a good good question. Thank you for asking that. It's a very good point. Um, If you can't find the video specifically, or, you know, if you're still, if you still have questions about it, then message me privately and we'll talk about it for sure. Or maybe it's something we could talk about in another session. We will, we will be covering it again for sure, no doubt. Um, but we're running out of time for today and I feel like it's quite an expensive one. I'll have to start drawing stuff out again and, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Um, so, yes, guys, thank you so much for coming through. I appreciate you guys being here every Sunday. Um, 
please, you know, feel free to share this with people. Let people know when you're asking, when you're inviting people to come and join B, yeah, let them know that we study together as a team every single week without fail. It's not always me that hosts these sessions. Augustine kindly has provided me with um, some training, some mentorship, you know what I mean, to get some other people coming in and, and, um, and you know, helping with that. It's not always going to be me that's going to be here. But the Sunday study sessions are going to be a constant feature. I am going to make sure that they're here. Even if it's not me that's here, I'm going to make sure someone else is here studying with you guys. Sometimes I'm not going to, sometimes I might be ill. Sometimes I might be, you know, too traumatized for whatever reason. You know, sometimes I might be, um, you know, on holiday. I could be anywhere, right? So it's not always going to be me that's here. Um, I'm trying to get some more people. So if any of you guys are experienced enough and you feel as though you'd be happy to, share what you know with some brand new people. If you've got good energy, then hit me up. Do you know what I mean? Send me a message. I'm always looking for people to come and lighten the load. I appreciate you. Um, but other than that, guys, thank you for being here. It looks as though our, um, our participants has doubled since we started. Do you know what I mean? So it's good to see all of you guys in the space, man. Thank you guys for coming. Um, hey, can I say something, please? Yeah, guys, we are 25. I keep promoting all the time to my team for them to come on Saturday and Sunday uh, Zoom meeting. Can I, please, can you go on uh, YouTube? There's a lot of videos Nate has been posted over there. Go subscribe it, like it, share. Please, we are 25 here. Everybody go on YouTube and you not know, like it over there. Subscribe it. And there's a lot of information. Myself, I've been learning through whatever you've been teaching here. So, Nate, you are doing an incredible job, and I appreciate you. Bro. Thank you, King. So, family, Thank go you there so and much. just subscribe there, please. Mm, agreed. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you so much, Alexander. I appreciate you for that, brother. Thank you so much. Yeah, guys, go and check out the YouTube. Go and watch the videos. Go and learn. Go and study. Um, take time, you know. Like, if you are going to come off of this Sunday study session and you're going to go and watch EastEnders, then you're playing with your life. Yeah, don't waste your time. Do you know what I mean? Go and study, go and learn. The market is going to open tomorrow morning, okay? And will you catch the trade or will you miss it? It depends on how prepared you are. If you are studying and you are preparing, then when the market moves, you'll be ready for it. If you're not preparing for it, then you're going to be reacting. You're going to be like, oh, maybe I should just jump in. That You will lose your money eventually, yeah? So study, study as much as you can. The more time you put in, the more results you will get out. That's all I have to say, guys. Thank you very much for coming through. And I'm going to see you guys next Sunday. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank Let's yeah, promote our yeah. life. Good job. Yeah, I've done it. Thank I've done you. It. It's done. And we'll be there. We'll Love be there. Bye-bye. All right, guys. See you later. Bye.